the 2024 Ballon d'Or. For the last 16 years, it's been between Messi and Ronaldo, with only Karim Benzema and Luka Modric disrupting that cycle. But finally, for the first time, neither of those two are supposed to win it this year, which raises the question, who actually deserves to win the coveted Ballon d'Or in 2024? At the time of this recording, there hasn't been a short list released yet, but one football has released a list of who they think is most likely to be the top 10 contenders. The list includes Lamin Yamal, Mohamed Salah, Harry Kane, Rodri, Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, Vinicius Jr., Mbappe, Bellingham, and Holland, all in no particular order. Some issues I see with this list is the fact that it isn't based entirely on form and achievements through the year. Messi and Ronaldo, while they might have good stats in their domestic leads and historically are the best players in history, when you compare them to the global landscape of football, they just don't play at a high level anymore. A few honorable mentions should be Lautaro Martinez, who's had an incredible season winning the Golden Boot in Serie A, scoring 27 goals in all competitions this season. He also won the Golden Boot in the Copa America, scoring the match winner in the final as well. Not having his name in the top 10 is extremely disrespectful. Danny Carvajal had a great season as well, scoring the match winner in the Champions League and having one of his best campaigns in club football. He also won the Euros with Spain and played really well there too, so I don't see why he shouldn't be included in the shortlist. The last player I thought would be really high rated for the average competent football fan would be Cole Palmer. Yeah, that's why they call him Cole Palmer, innit? Now, I'm not saying Cole Palmer should win the Ballon d'Or at all, but if you're going to stick 16-year-old Lamine Yamal on the shortlist, just because of what he did at the Euros, then by logic, Cole Palmer should be on this list. In the Euros, he didn't start a single match, yet he still assisted the goal that got England into the final, and then went on to score a goal in the final. He made an incredible impact given his playing time. And considering he also had 33 goals and assists in the Premier League and single-handedly got Chelsea into European football, I think he gets in the top 10, but you can be the judge. Really quick before I continue, I ask that you just take a moment and hit the subscribe button. It would really help me out as we're trying to hit our goal of 3,000 subs by the end of the year. Thank you. Now when it comes to who actually has the best chances of taking home the golden ball, it boils down to just a few things. On-field performance throughout the season, achievements and trophies won, and contributions to their team. The first player who I think shouldn't be anywhere near this list is Mohamed Salah. While the 32-year-old did score 25 goals this season in all competitions, he was very inconsistent toward the end of the season. He started really well, scoring 8 goals and assisting 4 in the first 10 matches of the Premier League, but after a minor hamstring injury, his form started to taper off. When it came to representing Egypt, he started AFCON 24, scoring and assisting against Mozambique, but then decided to do nothing for the rest of the tournament. This season was his worst in terms of goal output in the last three years. He also did not win any trophies with Liverpool this term. So I hate to say it, but his age is starting to catch up to him. Understandably, Harry Kane is up there in the rankings, but again, I don't think there is a chance he'll get anywhere near the trophy. The Englishman left Spurs with a sole desire to finally win a piece of silverware that wasn't an Audi Cup, Bruh. and he failed once again. Domestically, he had one of the best goal scoring seasons in the Bundesliga of all time and broke numerous records, yet somehow Munich were beaten to the Bundesliga title. In the Champions League, Harry Kane was insane, scoring 8 goals throughout the entire tournament. Yet after his best efforts, Bayern still could not make anything of it and crashed out in the semi-finals. Luckily they had the DFB Pokal, which should be an easy sweep for a team of Bayern's echelon. Oh wait, they lost to a third division side in the second round of the competition. If we look at the fact that Harry Kane has scored 36 goals in the season and had 8 assists, he should be first in the rankings. But it goes without saying that if you could score hundreds of goals, but if you don't win anything, then what does it all mean? Harry Kane's probably the best striker in the world today, but his team has let him down throughout his career. And obviously I'm 1-0 behind. And it's a good side. It's never easy. We come out second half a lot more. Energy. Now, when it comes to Mbappe, things start to come into a bit of a gray area. Mbappe is undoubtedly one of the most talented players in the world, and in the future, I do see him becoming one of the best players of all time. However, this year he was not very good. He was top scorer in Ligue 1, but let's be honest, the competition just really isn't there. We also need to understand that the Champions League has been the main focus for PSG in the last decade. Mbappe scored 8 goals in the UCL this year, equaling Harry Kane for the Golden Boot, but what makes him better is that he scored 5 goals in the knockouts and only 1 goal from penalties. For club, Mbappe has been phenomenal this year, surpassing expectations as far as domestic and European performances went, and he was the star player of Paris. But it is undeniable that a huge factor of the Ballon d'Or comes into representing your country on the biggest stage. In Mbappe's case, this year was the Euros, and his performance was shambolic. To be fair, he did break his nose in France's match against Austria, but when it was revealed he would return with the mask, I was expecting him to go crazy, but he flopped. He only scored one goal in the whole tournament which came from a penalty, and he would not play very good for the rest of the Euros. So do I think Mbappe deserves the Ballon d'Or? No, but should he be near the top of the list? Sort of. I don't really know where to stick him in the ranks, but I think next year when he starts playing for Madrid, he'll be due a Ballon d'Or. One name I did not expect to see so highly rated for a Ballon d'Or this year is Rodri. He's had an oddly exceptional year, winning the Premier League, UEFA Super Cup, Club World Cup, all with Man City, and then when he went to the OC, he obviously won it with Spain and one player at the tournament. But what I think is most impressive is the fact that in the last year, he has only lost one club game, the FA Cup final against Man United. He's not a goal scorer like every other player that is tipped to win, but the role he plays for whatever team he's in makes him an integral player. He plays the role of a deep-lying player 
playmaker that is mainly responsible for the stability of the back line and creating those progressive passes to start attacks. Roger's distribution has gotten so insanely good this year that his stats put him in the 99th percentile for passes attempted, passes completed, progressive passes, and in the 90th plus percentile for successful take-ons, carries, and touches. Throughout the whole season, he has maintained a 92% pass completion rate as well. Unbelievable. There is no doubt he's a player that makes very little mistakes, and I would say he's one of the most influential players in world football. So considering he won some of the best trophies this year, has incredible stats for a center defensive mid, and individually makes a huge difference, I think he's a top three favorite for the Ballon d'Or. But it will be tricky for him to outvote this next player. Vinicius Jr. has had a crazy 2023-24 season, scoring and winning the Champions League final with Madrid, scoring 24 goals in all competitions, winning La Liga, winning the Spanish Super Cup. He's almost done it all in club football this year. He showed that he is the best winger in world football right now, and honestly, there are not many players that can defend him. Vinicius Jr. was on top of the world when it came to playing for Real Madrid. And for his country, he was pretty good, scoring two goals in the Copa America, but Brazil crashed out pretty early. But when it comes to the thought of him winning a Ballon d'Or, I don't know if he can. Allow me to explain. Vinicius Jr., as skilled as he may be, is a terrible sportsman. He has no respect for the game and other people playing it, and overall is an arrogant and rude player. I'm sure you've seen the clip of him and Kimmich in the Champions League, where Vinny refuses to take the ball. He also dives a lot, and while you can defend it as a tactic, I think he does it too much. I'm surprised he doesn't have more red cards to his name. He is always picking fights with players, doesn't matter if Madrid is winning, losing, he's gonna cause some drama. So in the matter of him winning such a high level trophy like the Ballon d'Or comes up, I don't know if the award wants to have his face on it when there is so much controversy surrounding Vinicius Jr. But now the man that everyone wants to see win is of course Jude Bellingham. Jude Bellingham achieved a lot this year, winning his first UCL, La Liga title, and Spanish Super Cup. And I think what sets him apart from the rest of the competition right now is the fact that his output from midfield is incredibly high. When you take into account his age and waited for his country, the numbers add up. He scored a goal of 23 goals and 13 assists in all competitions for Cam this season, including finishing third in the Golden Boot Race in La Liga. When it came out to the Euros as well, England did not have a good campaign, but Bellingham did score two goals. One of them, a late equalizer, which effectively saved his country. He even assisted this goal as well. Bellingham, smashing hit, smashing All this at just 21 years old is absolutely insane. If you had to go off current form for Ballon d'Or, you should look no further than Jude Bellingham. He won a lot at club level, did a decent at the international level, and his character on and off the pitch is much better than some of the other players on this list. And for him to go on to win the Copa Trophy last year, and then win the Ballon d'Or this year, it would be a crazy storyline. Obviously, there are a lot of factors when it comes to the Ballon d'Or, but if I had to pick one man to win it all, it would have to be the boy from Birmingham, Jude Bellingham. In my opinion, he was extremely influential and consistent throughout the entire year and has so much potential moving forward. This is just my opinion, so don't hit on me too much in the comments, and I'm curious to see what you guys think, so comment down below and let me know who you think is winning the Ballon d'Or this year. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.